And my point here is that we must address this issue. I'm sad to say that we Muslim leaders have not addressed this issue either. After 9-11, when this thing came about war against radical Islam, rather than Muslim leaders trying to explain to the West that there is no such thing as radical Islam, in all human communities, they are radicals. They're liberals and rest are moderate. All human communities, Christians, Jews, everyone has it. But Islam is not radical, neither Judaism, neither Christianity, neither Hinduism. No religion preaches radicalism. All, the basis of all religion is compassion and justice, which differentiates us from animal, the animal kingdom. But unfortunately, the Muslim leadership was so scared of being called radical Islam that all of them became moderates. In Pakistan, we, we were in the eye of the storm, and our government coined a phrase called enlightened moderation. No one knows what it meant. But everyone started putting on Western suits that they were moderates, started speaking. Even those who didn't know English would speak English because they were moderates. No one had a clue what it was. Because we, in the Muslim world, did not explain to the West that there is no such thing as radical Islam. Uh, one of the reasons why, after 9-11, Islam was supposed to be uh, equated with terrorism was suicide attacks. Because the 9-11 bombers did a suicide attack, all sorts of theories came up that the Muslims uh, uh, are involved in suicide attacks because they will get virgin in heavens. Some came up with, what about women? Suicide attackers. So this bizarre thing happened. We no one explained. Suicide attacks and Islam came, uh, were equated. No one did research that before 9-11, the majority of suicide attacks in the world were by Tamil Tigers, who were Hindus. No one blamed Hinduism, and quite rightly. What has Hinduism got to do with what desperate people were doing in Sri Lanka? We all know about, we've seen films about Japanese kamikaze pilots uh, at the end of the Second World War doing suicide attacks. No one blamed the religion. But here we were, uh, trying to prove we were moderates and not explaining to the West. But the most important thing I wanted to say here today, uh, in explaining this uh, Islamophobia, Mr. President, and I feel it's very important because I've spent, because of, uh, I played professional sport in England, I spent a lot of time there, so I know how the Western mind works and how West views religion. So where the mis misunderstanding about Islam came. And it, it, one of the reasons it caused Islamophobia. That was, in 1989, this book was published, maligning, insulting, ridiculing our Prophet Muhammad wasallam. And there was a reaction in the Muslim world. The West couldn't understand what was the problem. Because in the West, because I have spent so much time in the West, religion is perceived completely differently. They don't, they don't look upon religion like we do. And so, Islam was supposed to be an intolerant religion. It was against freedom of expression. And Islam took a real beating 30 years ago. I still remember it became a watershed. And every two or three years, someone would malign a prophet, peace be upon him. There would be a reaction by the Muslims. And again, it was Islam, an intolerant religion. Again this time, I, I blame a certain section of the uh, people in the West who deliberately provoked this, knowing the impact it would have. But the majority of the people in the West didn't understand. This is where, again, Muslim leadership let the Muslims down. We should have explained to them what 
a prophet peace be upon him men means to us so in one minute i'll try and explain what he means to us a prophet was the witness to the divine book the holy quran the holy quran is the book of guidance for muslims and the prophet's life was living the quran he was an example of what the quran guided us to be so he is the ideal we all try to get to the prophet created the state of madina the first state in islam that state was the basis of a muslim civilization which became the predominant civilization for the next 700 years and what was that state i hear such strange things about islam that it is against women it's against minorities the first state of islam in madina most it was the first time a welfare state was set up the state took responsibility of the weak widows orphans poor people handicapped it taxed the rich spent the money on the poor the state announced that all human beings are children of adam hence equal whatever the color of the skin the state announced the prophet announced that and slave slavery the whole system depended on slavery as it did for many years uh, in the western societies the prophet said that one of the greatest deeds is to free a slave but it, because the society depended on on slavery he said but if but if you have to treat them as an equal member of the family and as a result something happened in a muslim world which did, hasn't happened in any other civilization slave dynasties appeared slaves became kings the mamluks slaves who became ruled egypt in india there were slave dynasties and then with minorities again you hear that islam in uh is supposed to be against minorities let me just make this clear in islam the prophet announced that everyone was free to practice his religion it was a sacred duty to to to, to protect the places of worship of all religions he announced that every person is equal in front of law whatever his religion or his color and this this incredible case and i always quote this that the fourth khalifa the head of state of madina he lost a case a court case against a jewish citizen so number one it showed there was a rule of law no one was above law and number two that a jewish citizen was an equal citizen so mr president when a muslim society is unjust to its minorities it is going against the religion of islam and a prophet peace be upon him so it is important to understand this the prophet lives in our hearts when he is ridiculed when he is insulted it hurts the as we human know we human beings understand one thing the pain of the heart is far 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 more hurtful than physical pain and that's why the muslims react and i always thought that if i ever had the stage i would try and explain this to uh, to the world community especially to the western community because having lived in the western community people didn't understand this when i first went as a teenager to uh, to england there was a there was a comedy film on jesus christ It, it's unthinkable in muslim societies so uh, we need to explain that look in a human community we must be sensitive to what causes pain to other human beings we have 
in the Western society, and quite rightly, the Holocaust is treated with sensitivity because it gives the Jewish community pain. That's all we ask, that when do not use freedom of speech to cause us pain by insulting a holy prophet. That's all we want. 